Hello and welcome. I am Tampa J and this is Tampa, Florida. Well, it's one for the money, two for the show, three to get ready. Now go cat go. The very first line of the very first song on the very first album of Elvis Presley, Blue Suede Shoes. Did you know the album cover, the photograph on that album cover, the very first Elvis album, that photo was taken right here in Tampa, Florida. I'm gonna show you where that photo was taken today. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome if it's your first time. Again, I am Tampa J. Just like you out there, maybe just like you, I am a huge fan of Elvis Presley and I have spent a lot of time here on this channel documenting my fandom, my love, and locations that Elvis himself has visited and we're doing that again here today highly anticipated video welcome to the time of Elvis here in Tampa I'm gonna show you where he ate where he sat and ate where he performed there's a couple places where he stayed and also where he watched a movie I'm gonna retrace the footsteps of Elvis Presley once again here today did you know Colonel Tom Parker Elvis's manager who was recently played portrayed by Tom Hanks in the latest movie. Did you know Colonel Tom Parker used to live right here in Tampa for almost 20 years? And that is one of the main reasons why Elvis would come here five times to perform during his music career. The first time that Elvis came here was in 1955, driving a 1954 pink Cadillac with his moon, with his blue moon boys, his original three-piece man. They all came here, Elvis drove in his pink Cadillac. I'll show you where that Cadillac was parked once today also. I am like so stoked right now. I've got goosebumps on my goosebumps. As I said before, I've been wanting to create this video for a long time. And if you're a fan of Elvis, I believe I'm gonna show you some things and some places share some history that you may not have ever known before. I don't even know if this has ever been in a video. I do know that I tried to do this a couple years ago, but things were shut down, as, uh, specifically the restaurant, the booth where Elvis ate, that was shut down a few years ago. I have eaten in that booth before, way before YouTube, years ago, but that establishment will be open today for lunch, and we'll be able to sit down and uh, eat. Actually, Elvis, was notorious for ordering peanut butter uh, and banana sandwiches. And legend has it that he consumed a bunch of those sandwiches where we will be sitting and eating today. So we'll get there. And uh, I really appreciate you guys watching, guys. Um, huge Elvis fan. And here we go. I hope you enjoy my time checking these places out. There's much ahead. Oh yeah, let's rock and roll. And so it begins in one of the trendiest districts in all of Tampa. Welcome to Seminole Heights. I wanted to begin here because this is the neighborhood of the diner where Elvis ate. Actually a little bit south of here. But as you can see, Florida Avenue, just a busy little street here in Tampa. Nice place to eat here. Live food, live music. It's got a cool vibe to it. I think Elvis, if he were here today, he would really enjoy Seminole Heights as he did years ago. All right, now let's head south down Florida Avenue to the diner. And I want to begin here. We'll come back here later for lunch, but imagine, let's go back to 1955, Elvis Presley pulling into this parking lot in a 1954 pink Cadillac Fleetwood after a show down the street at the Tampa Armory. He would come up here and get a late night snack. The Aries Diner was open 24 hours back in those days, and Elvis knew where to come and get his peanut butter sandwiches right here at this very diner. Let's take a closer look and later we'll come back when it opens and sit at the same booth where Elvis sat. This is now the Chenko Chop Shop. It's a bit of a Japanese style restaurant. I have eaten inside here before, over a decade ago. After it was the Aries Diner, it became Nikko's Diner. And inside, there is a plaque at the booth where Elvis once ate. Legend has it, he ordered those sandwiches and would come up here after his performances in 1955 and 1956. A young 21 year old Elvis has eaten in this restaurant allegedly many of times. Look at this old classic Americana uh, boxcar style diner. It looks amazing. It has gone through transitions, but this is original. Those are the steps 
that Elvis walked up right there and went inside to eat. The last time I was out here was a few years ago and this fence was not here. They've created a patio right out front of the diner. Now back in the day, there were several Aries diners in the Tampa Bay area. It was a chain, but this is the last standing structure that used to be called or used to be an Aries diner. This is the last one. I've got some old pictures here. This is from the time when it was called Nico's. This is the time that I last ate inside this diner. That's what it looked like right there. That sign is still here today, and I believe that's the original sign, the Aries sign as well. The sign is as old as the building. Also inside, a plaque at the booth dedicated on May 15, 2006, of where Elvis once ate. We will see this plaque today when we come back for lunch. I wanted to come up here and set it up properly to show you the location. To further the story, we will have to go to the next location where Elvis first performed in Tampa. And there's quite a bit of history there. Wait till you get a load of this, as they say. Okay, so that sign, the Chenko sign, the sign that sits in front of the diner today is the original Aries Diner sign. That sign, has just been transitioned. The whole pole and everything. This is a dark shot, but this is the diner back in the 50s right here in Florida Avenue. You can definitely make out the diner. The steps before the diner, oh my gosh, they're the same, just as I thought. You can see them there in the shadows, but down the lower right-hand corner, if you look in the center of the photo, you can see the steps. Wow, this diner's been here for a long time. Love it, can't wait to eat in there, I'm hungry. And it's a little too early though. So amazing how original everything is right here. Think about young Elvis Presley walking through that very door as he really did back in 1955 and 56. The hours of this restaurant, this current restaurant, they don't open till 11.30. So yes, we will be back, that's for sure. Well, I did bring my blue suede shoes today. My vans will have to work standing here across from this building on North Howard Avenue and across from this building 522 North Howard Avenue. Welcome to Fort Homer Hesterly. If these walls could talk or sing, there is so much history I'm about to throw at you guys. The main subject matter, Elvis Presley, played here nine times between 1955 and 1956. The first time was in May 1955. He did two shows, two to three shows, per date, so he played in this building nine times. There are several photographs that I am going to spit at you, show you in the screen today. A little brief history, Fort Homer Hesterly, formerly the Tampa Armory, housed a lot of events and a lot of famous figures, originally called Benjamin Field. Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., President John F. Kennedy, also James Brown, Elvis Presley, Johnny Cash, the Doors, Pink Floyd, The Ramones, and many more, including Andy Griffith, who would open up for Elvis Presley here way before he went to Mayberry, would open up in 1956 for Elvis Presley. Also, when Elvis first performed here with the uh, Hank Snow Jamboree with Hank Snow, they portrayed that event in the uh, newest Elvis movie that just came out last year when the colonel uh, met up with Elvis, he took him on a tour, and part of that tour, actually a lot of it was right here in Florida, and he was on that Hank Snow Jamboree. This today, this building, which we're gonna walk around and share some photographs, is now the Shauna and Brian Glazer, Shannon Brian Glazer JCC. This is a school, I think for the kiddos. We're gonna do our best to try to get inside today. I don't know if that's gonna happen. But there are, were all kinds of photos taken inside and around this building with Elvis in them. And we're going to try to match those up as I tell you what went on here. This is an awesome building. Also, the birthplace of NWA Wrestling. We're talking about Dusty Rhodes and Dick the Bruiser. This is where that all began, guys. This is an iconic piece of architecture right here. The, the amount of history. We're talking about JFK speaking in this building right here. That's incredible. Martin Luther King Jr. That's incredible. Elvis Presley. The Doors, the Ramones. Wow, amazing. And earlier I mentioned I would show you where this photograph was taken. This was taken 
by a local photographer here in Tampa named William Robertson. It is known as the tonsil photo because you can pretty much see Elvis's tonsils. This photograph was taken as Elvis was performing here in 1955 inside of Fort Homer Hesterly, right here. That's amazing. That is this first album cover. The price of admission on May 8, 1955 to see the 21 year old Elvis was $1 a ticket and the place sold out. Actually 5,000 was all that could fit inside of Homer Hesterly and the show sold out. In 1955, Elvis again was driving that pink Cadillac Fleetwood and he would have pulled up to Fort Homer Hesterly and it actually over to the side at the loading dock, which I'll show you in a moment. The second time he came, he was driving a brand new Lincoln. And there are photographs of him in front of the Lincoln outside of the fort here where he performs. So I'm gonna to try to match up some of those photographs of Elvis standing out here, greeting his fans and signing autographs and just standing in front of his car. Let's see if we can find those spots. And I'm walking along the south side of the building Behind this wall, along the building, is the former loading dock where the band and Elvis would have came in and left the building. You know I had to say that. And here we are on the south side of Fort Homer Hesterly. This is the side entrance, the former side entrance. I have with me several photographs that were taken out here in 1956 and 1955. This is where Elvis and his band would have loaded into this is a window now this has all been remodeled for the school but this is the old loading dock and in the photos i'm about to show you, you can make out some of the trim here the windows and then in one photograph you can make out this house out beyond elvis as he's signing autographs specifically this awning here this is an old bungalow these are what the old uh, Tampa houses look like, these old bungalows, bohemian style. Okay, so I can't encroach into the property, but I'm on a public sidewalk. So I can, I'm gonna have to do it from here. I was kindly uh, instructed not to come on property, but that's okay, we can do it all right here. It is all right here around us. I'm gonna show you the photos I have in my phone just to begin, I don't know who the photographer is. If someone is watching and knows, just comment below. These are all over the internet. That is Elvis in the Colonel. This photo was allegedly taken somewhere here in Tampa, perhaps where Elvis, uh, or where the Colonel stayed. All these photos that you see were taken right out here or inside Fort Homer Hesterly. This is Elvis checking out his new Lincoln, parked right here in front of the wall. That's a cool shot there. There he is closing the hood. Again, right here in front of me. I'm just gonna show you. This was uh, actually aiming across the street here, behind us. These doors, that's inside. Several famous photographs. Uh, he, him reading the newspaper, the newspaper article, the local Tampa Tribune paper. Um, these are the doors right in front of me. This was all taken here at the Fort Homer Hesterly specifically right here in this spot. I think it's this photo, not this one, it's coming up. This house right here, there, is right behind me. I just wanna show you these photos before we get started. It looks like they're doing some construction out here, so it might be a little loud. Here's one of the most iconic photos taken here. Wow, this is amazing. There he is, shutting the hood of the Lincoln. And that's what the inside used to look like. That's where Elvis performed inside the Tampa Armory, right there. It doesn't look like that anymore, it's all offices. All right, so right here, this trim to the right of the door and specifically the window down to the right. Now I'm gonna show you the photo and you can make out the trim and that window right behind Elvis as he's stirring up that cup of coffee or tea. I'm not sure if that's coffee or tea he has right here, but that photograph was taken. The radio interview happened right here in front of the south door. Look at that, then and now. Check this out, you see the doorway behind him? That's the same doorway we've been looking at. That would have put Elvis, actually that right there, that window, is this window right here. Elvis's car was parked right in front of that window when this photograph was taken. Now I would have to go in there on property to get the right angle, but he was standing right there. The door is behind him. I'll put a I'll put the picture back into frame so you can see it. 
That's pretty cool. King of rock and roll standing right there. Out here many a times. Four times actually. Four times and nine shows. So Elvis is signing autographs for these young ladies here. If you look out beyond that Cadillac. Now that could be his Cadillac. This could have been taken in 55. He was driving a Lincoln when he was doing the interview. But that house, that awning can be seen as clear as day then as now specifically the awning roof and structure and the columns check this out right here wait for it there it is right there specifically this area right there I'll put a screenshot of the picture below look out beyond Elvis there beyond the Cadillac that is the same house that you can see so that photo was actually probably taken over in that direction because it looks like it's looking out this way. And I found another photograph where you can make out the house again. Way back there behind Elvis, you can see the peak of the roof and the awning out beyond the fence. Also, you can see some uh, military vehicles as well, confirming that this was the armory. Look at this, the peak of the roof right there behind Elvis. And this is like directly across from that door so there you go wow elvis in tampa okay still standing on the sidewalk this is a better angle this is the area where elvis was parked again the doors down there i think these perhaps used to be the garage doors of the armory and in that case the photos i'm putting into screen right now of the garage doors and elvis closing the hood in his car famous photos were taken right there as well that's pretty amazing. And one more cool find here. Check this out. You see the window there? The bars? Okay, I found that spot because the bars are still in that window. Right to the right of this main door. Okay, I'm going to zoom in just so you can see. Put it in perspective. Here's that window. And there's that window right there. The bars still there. And that trim piece that you see in the other photographs right above there. That's where they were standing. That is where uh, Elvis was drinking the coffee or tea, whatever it was, and he was speaking into the microphone being interviewed for the radio. Right there in that very spot, I'll put a picture down in the right lower hand corner. That is amazing. Elvis has left the building. Man, I love saying that. This is one of the first buildings he ever left. <laughs> in 1896, this land was gifted to the city of West Tampa as a public park by George N. Benjamin, a prominent entrepreneur and early West Tampa leader, the park was built, and two years later, it was used by Theodore Roosevelt and the Rough Riders as a camp during the Spanish-American War. And if you've been watching this channel for a bit, you will remember a vlog I created back at the Tampa University of Tampa, formerly the Tampa Bay Hotel, that is where Teddy and the Rough Riders stayed. And that's only a few blocks from here, but they utilized this building before they shipped out to Cuba. What a building. So much history. Wow, okay. Now to the next Elvis Presley and Tampa spot. All right, so I'm getting hungry, but we still have an hour and a half until the diner opens up and we can eat where Elvis ate. I'm heading to the next Tampa Elvis location. I'm actually heading to my own neighborhood. We're heading to South Tampa. And so it begins in my local neighborhood, South Tampa, in front of the Pet Supermarket. Why am I starting here? Well, it's because it's next to Del Mabry, and Del Mabry is home to Britton Plaza. This is probably one of the oldest strip malls, longest running in the state of Florida. I think it's the oldest one in Tampa for sure. But Britton Plaza opened in 1956. During that time, that was the second visit, the second go around for Elvis coming and performing up at the Armory in Tampa. And there is a legend, a legend, I say legend because there's nowhere on the internet to confirm this. Me being a Tampa uh, Tampanian for all these years, actually working and living in South Tampa. I worked as a Napa Auto Parts delivery driver just right up the street here. Me working and living here, talking to people, folks that were living in Tampa at the 50, in the 50s at the time, I've heard several times that Elvis would come here to Britain Plaza's theater, the Britain Theater, and watch a movie in 1956. He, the legend is that he actually watched a movie right here in this plaza. And I want to show you where that is. I had to throw this in here. Again, I, there is no 
fact, maybe someone who's watching can contribute in the comment section, but there is no uh, documentation of this happening, just uh, word of mouth. And I believe that it is true, just because I've heard multiple people tell me the same story that Elvis saw a movie here. So I thought it would be important to show you where he once watched a movie, The King of Rock and Roll in 1956, right here in Britain Plaza. Now before we go over there, just a more brief history. This is one of the oldest plazas in all of Florida. Again, this legendary sign. Publix, the only original anchor still in the plaza. It actually left uh, and came back. The Publix that is here today is not the original. It was an Albertsons at one time, but Publix is the only original anchor from 1956 to still be in Britain Plaza. And here we are further in the plaza, the Publix over here, and right next to Plato's Closet, actually between there, the Nutrifit, Cell Doctor, and Happy's Rent to Own. As you can see, this looks like a theater because it was formerly the Britain Theater now a church. I have been inside this building many of times to watch movies. Not even a dec decade ago, uh, it was still a theater called the Britain 8. It was an eight, uh, eight screen cinema when it originally opened back in 1956. It was only one theater. And I believe in the 60s it became two and then eventually they would split it up into eight screens. So the legend has it that Elvis Presley came here and watched a movie. And that is simply the legend that is all we know now 1956 is when this opened we do know that Elvis was traveling heavily in Florida at that time doing shows in st. Petersburg Lakeland here in Tampa Jacksonville he could have been staying uh, somewhere local as we know Colonel Tom Parker uh, had a home here he may have been centrally located in the Tampa Bay area so he may have been here several times I have heard from uh, friends and co-workers all through the years uh, living and working here in Tampa that uh, Elvis visited the Britain uh, theater and watched movies so no photographs I have found on the internet nothing to confirm it but it is a cool thought and we had to throw it in the video I will say that I have also heard stories of uh, the Britain theater uh, formerly Britain theater right here uh, being haunted specifically the ladies restroom uh, toilets would flush on their own they would hear noises stalls would uh, shut I uh, last time I was inside this building was probably a decade ago I think the last movie I watched in here was the last uh, I think it was oh it was the last Fantastic Four movie. That was the last time I was in here. At that time, it was considered a dollar movie theater. I would, uh, I think I'd pay two to three bucks to go inside and like five bucks for popcorn. I kind of miss those days. Uh, now a church, but still a theater. It opened on August 15th, 1956. It was a 2200 seat single screen theater with a balcony. The opening movie was with Ginger Rogers, the first traveling sales lady. That was the name of the movie. It became a triplex in 1983. And on November 25th, 1992, it was converted into an eight screen. So there you go. And it closed in 2017. And now since then, it's been the Radiant Church. So there used to be a ticket booth that sat right here and all the movie posters were along the walls. I specifically remember the movie posters of walking into the doors. Right here is the lobby. Oh wow, it's really nice in there compared to the last time I was in here. That stair case actually goes up to a movie theater. I think there was two on top and six in the bottom. Now, when Elvis would have came here, there just would have been one theater. There is a slight possibility that he did not come here the night he performed or around that time because this theater op opened up on August 15th, 1956, just a week after Elvis had his last performance at Fort Homer Hesterly. I believe that was August 8th. So that kind of uh, goes against the rumor of him being here during that time. Now Elvis would return to Tampa in 1970 for his uh, third performance. Actually, that would be his 10th, but his third location, his third time. And I will show you where that is next. That's where we're heading next to downtown Tampa, back to downtown Tampa. Yeah. But I just had to show you this former theater, which I'm sad to see it go. I've watched a ton of movies inside those doors and always thought that I was, you know, watching them where Elvis once watched a movie. I've always heard that rumor. So, so cool. So if anyone knows who is watching 
and knows the history of Elvis and Britain Plaza and they can confirm that. That would be awesome if you could just leave a comment so everyone can see because I've heard that story so many times but I cannot find anything on the internet that confirms it, not even a photograph. But that would be cool if someone could come forward with a photograph or a newspaper article, something like that. I guarantee it's gotta be out there somewhere if Elvis did in fact leave this building. Oh yeah, I did it again. <laughs> Britain Plaza. I've been wanting to show this location for a long time. Hey, welcome back to downtown Tampa. These fountains, these famous fountains right here at Curtis Hickson Park before Ashley Drive are kind of just simmering down. Come back up, it's hot. I love this park. We've been out here many of times for many different events. One for the Super Bowl party a couple years back. Also a Punisher film uh, filming location right there at the Sykes building when I did the filming locations, Howard Saints building. All kinds of happenings happening. Green Day was out here last year for a concert. They're always having concerts, uh, food truck rallies, all kinds of events here at Curtis Hickson Park, the former location of Curtis Hickson Hall, where three times Elvis Presley performed in 1970, 1975, and 1976, which would have been his last performance at the former stadium that used to sit right out here along the Hillsborough River. That's the river walk right there. Beyond there, you can make out the building of the University of Tampa, the former Tampa Bay Hotel, opened by Henry Plant. We were mentioning that earlier. The Rough Riders, Teddy Roosevelt stayed there just to set things up. I'm gonna walk down there and uh, show you some photographs, but I just wanted to show you this is the former location of Curtis Hickson Hall, where Elvis Presley performed in downtown Tampa back in 1976. As we all know, he died in 1977. So this was close to the end of his life, unfortunately. Uh, always tragic going into the history of Elvis Presley being a big fan. Uh, wish the King was still with us. As he was playing out here at Curtis Hickson Hall, I believe, I don't know if it was all three times, but I definitely know in 1976, he was staying down the street here at the hotel, which we will get there in a moment. But first I just wanted to show you this spot, this iconic spot for Elvis Presley here in Tampa, formerly Curtis Hickson Hall. Curtis Hickson Park. And here we go, approaching the river, Hillsborough River. Quite a few people enjoying the water out here, several boats. Again, the Tampa Bay Hotel, the River Walk, and if we look back this way, Curtis Hickson Park. Oh, there's a giant dino on top of the Glazers Children Museum right there. Triceratops, that's cool. They must have a dinosaur display, but I came over here. I'll put a picture of the former Curtis Hickson Hall down on the right hand corner. The building sat right here at 600 North Ashley in downtown Tampa. This is the spot where Elvis played three times in the 70s. And for the next Elvis in Tampa location, right there, Hotel Floridan. This is where Elvis stayed during his last performance here in downtown Tampa at the Curtis Hickson Hall, right there in that hotel. I've shown it many a times before, but never did I know Elvis stayed here until recently. I always report that JFK stayed here in this hotel just right before he flew to Dallas and was killed. This is also where Jackie and John F. Kennedy stayed during those times. Last place Elvis ever stayed in Tampa, the Hotel Floridan, right here on Florida Avenue, right behind the Tampa, actually the Tampa Theaters right here. Look at that, right across from it. I'm gonna get out of the car and show you. Maybe we can walk into the lobby, take a peek, take a look around. Approaching this beautiful piece of architecture from Marion Street, Hotel Floridan sits on Florida Avenue, actually 905 North Florida Avenue. And as you can see, there's some scaffolding at the base, the main entrance there. They're doing a little bit of construction. And not only did John F. Kennedy and Elvis Presley stayed here, also Jimmy Stewart once stayed here, Charlton Heston, Gary Cooper, Constance Bennett, Esther Williams, Sherman Hayes, and the Cincinnati Reds. When the Cincinnati Reds were in town for spring training, they would stay here at this hotel, the Floridan. Okay, I'm gonna go in here, look around. If they don't let me take video, I'll take some pictures. But here are the main doors that Elvis Presley once would have walked into. And also, 
John F. Kennedy. John F. Kennedy stayed here four days before he was assassinated in Dallas, him and Jackie. They, uh, they were here for a few days. He actually spoke at Fort Homer Hesterly in 1963, where Elvis played. They both stayed here, and they both once uh, stood inside of that, uh, of that Tampa Armory. That's another coincidence I'm just now putting together. The king of rock and roll and JFK. Two spots in Tampa. Okay, so here it is. I'm finally inside. It took me a long time to get in here. It looks like once you get right through these doors, there's a lot of construction going on, by the way, but once you get in these doors, these steps up to the lobby area right there. And then over here is the lounge. Now this lounge is as old as the building. It's been renovated several times, but there are stories of sailors uh, from World War II hanging out here way back in the day all kinds of crazy stories just like that oh wow okay i came up the steps here there's the door we just walked in off a of cast this is a beautiful place wow okay so the main counter is right behind this wall here this is the lobby this is beautiful i can't believe it took me this long to come in here okay here's the ceiling above the main lobby check out the chandelier this is beautiful. This is where everyone checks in to come into the hotel. And someday I plan on staying here. I've always planned on staying here. I would love to be able to stay in the room that JFK did, perhaps Elvis, not so sure where they stayed. I will get to the bottom of it though. If I find out, I'll let you know and perhaps stay in that room if possible. I believe that only a certain part of the hotel is still open today. It was renovated and reopened, I believe, back in the early 2000s, and not uh, entirely. I think they're going, they're doing it at a slow pace. They're currently restoring this hotel, as you can see the construction as we walked in over the years. It's, it's very large, and it's beautiful. I can't believe it took me this long to come in here. Wow. The president, the king of rock and roll, Cincinnati Reds, Gary Cooper. Jimmy Stewart all stepped foot in this lobby right here and stayed at this hotel. There's the elevators. They had to take those elevators. And I almost forgot to tell you the ghost story. Now there are several ghost stories about this hotel you can read online, but there's one that mentions Elvis Presley. So the story goes, don't know what floor, um, don't know the specifics, but there was a lady staying here who allegedly um, witnessed her radio that was unplugged from the wall, no electricity, witnessed her radio playing at all hours of the night Elvis Presley's Heartbreak Hotel. And it went all night, it would come and go, and there was no power to it. And uh, basically the, the radio was, a, the ghostly radio was playing Elvis's Heartbreak Hotel. And it, it got so bad that she came down to the lobby, went up to the desk, right up there with the radio and she said to the person at the counter she said look this is what's been going on all night for some reason this radio is not plugged in there's no batteries but it keeps playing Elvis Presley's Heartbreak Hotel and um, at that moment the man uh, that was behind the counter the person said that's uh, kind of strange because we just got word that Elvis had just passed away. It was 1977, the very night that Elvis passed away. A ghost phantom radio played Heartbreak Hotel right in the hotel that Elvis once stayed at, the floor dam. I just put something together. Okay, passing the hotel right here and about to make a right onto North Florida Avenue. The hotel that Elvis stayed at is on the same road that the diner is on, just way up north on Florida Avenue is where we're heading to have lunch. Back to the diner. Wow, that's, that's another funny coincidence. Two Elvis Tampa locations on Florida Avenue. The Floridan and the Aries Diner, the former Aries Diner. Truck and trailer pulling out there behind me on North Florida Avenue. Welcome back to where it all began. Chaco. I hope the food's good here. I like Japanese food, so I'm sure it will be. Elvis Presley, Aries Diner, 1955. 56. I hope Elvis's booth is available. If not, I will wait. Okay, so I'm going up the steps here as Elvis would have done and I'm gonna go through 
The Door traditional boxcar diner. Looks a lot different than I remember. The last time I ate here it was called Nico's and I believe, if I remember correctly, I ordered like an Eggs Benedict or a Western omelet. And today, I perhaps might be getting some seafood. Maybe some sushi or maybe some noodles. Look at this, this looks awesome. Also, these are the old benches that would have been here back in the day. And Elvis's booth, where he ate, is actually right behind me. It's currently being occupied, but as I said, I'm gonna wait. I see a lot of Japanese stuff in here. I don't see any uh, Elvis stuff, which is all right, but I thought it'd be kind of cool. Maybe give him a little nod somewhere, but I don't see anything. I see Godzilla up there. And ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, everyone in between the moment, I have been looking for, we've all been looking for, here is the booth that Elvis Presley ate at in the 1950s. And there's a little plaque. This is the only thing that commemorates that Elvis ate here, just a little plaque. There used to be an older plaque that sit here, and I believe I showed an image of it in the beginning of the video. I'll put that in the screen below down to the right again. I remember seeing that plaque when I sat here years ago. I, this will be my second time sitting here. But wow, it's been, yeah, it's been over a decade. Elvis is booth. And this is a look out the window. Now, he came here several times, it says. I don't know why specifically this booth. Yeah. Maybe he always sat here. Maybe he only sat here once and they knew he sat at this one for from one of the occasions. But this is Mark Elvis's booth. This would have been his uh, view of Florida Avenue outside. I'm sure it looked much different. I'm sure that, that church was there and that building was there though. These these buildings are very old. And here's the bar right behind me. So now it is quick serve. I've got to go up and order at the kiosk, but I can once I get the food, I can bring it back here to the booth. So that's what I'm about to do. Order some food. I, I didn't see any peanut butter sandwiches on the menu, but legend has it. Nico's Diner uh, claim the former tenant of this building that Elvis sat here at this booth and ordered many uh, peanut butter sandwiches. So, there you go. The story is true that Elvis did like the peanut butter sandwich. He, that's written all over, uh, all over the place. That that was his favorite snack. Look at that old vintage and original clock right there above the kitchen window. Not keeping time accurately either. It thinks it's fi it's five o'clock somewhere. Oh, I see what they did there. Such a chill spot. I can't believe it took me all these years to get back inside this diner. So cool. Okay, not only is the floor original, the stools, this table, the booth has probably been redone, the actual seat several times, because, you know, it wears out. But this, if this is where Elvis really sat, this is the same table. Let's see, you know, like switch it out or something, but it looks original to me. It's pretty old. And my Miyagi bowl has arrived. Also, my green tea. There we go. Came out to about 20 bucks with a tip and all. It's a lot of food too. Look at all that. Pretty hefty, pretty heavy. Heavy, there's that word again. And for the first time on camera, my second time, eating where Elvis ate, right here on the same day. This looks really good. Oh wow, I'm a fan, I'm a huge fan. I would call it a fusion of flavors. I even taste like pickles in there, which I love pickles. So I don't know what's going on in the Miyagi bowl, but I'm loving it. And you heard Mr. Miyagi himself and the Karate Kids say, man who catch fly with chopstick accomplish anything. Well, I tell you, man who eat noodles with chopstick accomplish anything. This bowl's so large, I will probably be taking some of this home with me. Holy cow, that's a lot of noodles right there. <laughs> Two people could split that easily. Elvis. Can't believe I'm sitting in this booth finally. I came out here a few years back, as I said in the beginning of the video. The place was shut down. Who knew today would be the time, right here in 2023? It happened. It finally went down. Eating where Elvis ate. As far as I know, this is the only recorded location known that we're Elvis ate in Tampa. If you know any, any more, if you're watching, please send it my way, comment below. I'd love to know. I know he's eaten that Coney Island hot dog up in Brooksville, which we've been there several times, and we've eaten there before, but this is the only place I know of in Tampa that was recorded that Elvis actually ate at, right here, at the old Aries Diner. 
AKA Chinko today. There you go, that's about all I can eat. I'm gonna give this a go box or a bag. Also, we're in the shadows here because the sun is like right there, so you can't really see everything that's going on. There you go. That's a little better. I like the food. All the time, this is not uh, a far drive. Here we go, saying goodbye to Elvis Presley's booth, the one he ate at here in the diner. I work in Tampa, so this is not a bad drive for me. I should come here more often for lunch, and I might do so from now on. Have a nice day. Got it to go. That was so much food. Have to take it home. I hope you enjoyed this video, everyone. Thank you so much for watching. I am Tampa J, and these were the locations of Elvis here in Tampa. Again, wanted to create this video a few years back and go more in depth, and today I was able to get back into the restaurant and finally sit and eat where Elvis Presley ate. If you're a fan of Elvis, if you like the king of rock and roll, if you love him just like millions of uh, people out there, uh, I've got so many friends that have covered Elvis, uh, love him as much as I do. If you're one of those, I, I, I hope you enjoyed the video, and if not, I, I just hope you enjoyed my experience going about parts of Tampa that you may have not seen before. So I really appreciate everyone always watching, being here, sticking with it, and uh, coming here all the way to the end of the video. So appreciate that. If it's your first time here, make sure you subscribe below and hit the notification bell and come on back. I really appreciate it. Thanks, guys. Can't say that enough. I am super full. I am super happy. That was so much fun. And uh, I'll see you next time. I am Tampa J, and there is much ahead, much leftovers ahead too. Right here where Elvis ate, and at home, in my fridge. Of course, have a nice day. All right, see you guys. See you, diner. I'll be back, that's for sure, much ahead. Bye-bye. Oh, also, did you know? Did you know that you're awesome, that you're loved, and no matter who you are, what you're going through, there's always much ahead. I almost forgot to say that. I always say that. All right, guys, see you later. Chop, chop. Got to get out of here. Get it? Chop, chop. Okay. I'm out. Bye. See you later. Bye-bye.